Greetings then all, this is David Fuxa and you're watching my Let's Learn series for the Valoran Shadowblade. So last time we basically visited the uh, Golden Graveyard and then we just moseyed over to the Hidden Compound where we fought some slavers and their enthralled slaves. And then we participated in the Ring of Blood, a game at the end of the Hidden Compound and uh, run we won the um, Blood Collar which is basically this special ring right here. The blood color basically gives us a little bit of life leech, which lets us uh, steal life from our foes. So we're going to be doing to the Samhorn Tunnels now, and the Samhorn uh, Lair is actually a very um, deceitfully dangerous place. The enemies here aren't actually too strong, but the thing about this area is that the, um, the terrain itself is actually quite dangerous. You get around by following these sandworm burrows over the place, and sometimes it's these little guys, or sometimes it's a big, huge guy. I'll actually hit this right now. And this is basically how you get around. You just basically follow these guys, and they basically go wherever. However, as you sort of you know travel around, you'll notice that the sand is actually filling in. So the thing about um, this uh, this dungeon, you basically follow these guys, and the sand that you know is behind them actually collapses. And sometimes, uh, if you're underneath that sand, it'll actually uh, um, damage you and eventually suffocate you if you can't find your way out. Extremely dangerous. Now, there's a few ways you can get around this. Um, if you have good speed, like in this case I've got the Ferris Steel Amulet, or if you have the ability to uh, um, use like jump abilities or teleport around, it's not too bad in here because you can essentially just um, uh, jump out of any you know sand that falls on top of you if you're not careful or um, potentially get out of the situation you got yourself in if you're in trouble. But if um, you come in here and it's like you're without those abilities, you know, speed or the ability to teleport, you can get uh, really injured and um, potentially get killed. I've actually lost a few characters or a few lives um, just from the fact that sometimes Sam would just cr crunch on top of my character and kill me. You'll notice that the enemies in here are, you know, nothing really too spectacular. We basically have like oozes and we have sandworms and they don't really cause you too much problems. There's a couple enemies in here that uh, can cause problems, but we've yet to encounter them, so I haven't really had a chance to, uh, you know, describe why they're dangerous. Now, noteworthily, there's a couple ways you can sort of like push through the uh, sandworm tunnels. One way of like sort of dealing with this area is just to sort of push on to the staircase and then just get out. And that has the advantage of just, you know, getting you through the dungeon and getting to the boss and killing the boss. And that's actually the main reward here. You actually want to kill a boss for sure from this dungeon. But there's also some benefit to actually exploring around these uh, um, dungeons because sometimes you'll find treasure chests all over the place. There's actually a high chance to find treasure chests on any of the... Uh, um, like little enclosed rooms in this dungeon. By the way, you probably don't want to run into your uh, borrowers because that actually makes me go off in random directions as opposed to where they were going before. In that case, he went somewhere else. But luckily, this guy's going to wherever he was going now. And there's an example of a treasure chest appearing. So we're just going to heal up here. So this treasure chest, I can actually loot it or, you know, tend to loot it. And you can actually sometimes find good items from these chests. And that's just the cursed. Usually the Enix in here aren't too bad. And here's an example of, like, you know, we'll know what would happen if you uh, didn't look for this chest. Here's a, uh, a good possible item that popped up. This is actually a two-handed weapon, so I can't use it. But as you can see, it's tier four. And if I was a two-handed wielder, that'd be a terrific weapon to use and just clobber anything with. Um, it gives me a little bit of armor. Gives a little armor penetration, physical crit chance. It gives some re uh, resistance penetration to physical darkness and cold. Gives me a little blight and physical. Um, when I'm willing to do eight additional blight damage, when I uh, 
Um, do a critical, I do a burst, which basically hits anything in a radius of two with 24 ice damage. The weapon crit, uh, when it criticals, it does a cripple on the on a target it hits. There's a ton of uh, you know abilities on like some of these on this like little uh, random uh, artifact that has popped up, and I'll note by the way this is a random artifact. When they're orange like this, they're basically um, on par with like the fixed starts, the uh, fixed um, artifacts over here, and um, these rand darts, the random artifacts. They basically uh, have random abilities attached to them, but sometimes they can add up to be some really uh, powerful abilities on them. In this case, this one is actually quite decent if I was, you know, uh, actually using that type of weapon, which I'm not, so nothing really to say about it past that. I'll also note that you can pick up a lot of infusions and ruins, as you can see. This is uh, not just, you know, just a bunch of randomness. There's actually a lot of uh, infusions and ruins sort of spawning in this dungeon, and I can make use of these. Uh, if there's like anything of use to me, which there wasn't any just yet, so all this stuff is this game moved to my inventory for now, and uh, I think we'll maybe keep this Pox of uh, Shout. This is actually um, a bit stronger than this one. Maybe we'll keep it just for that reason. Also, the the rare uh, cursed ooze I thought that was guarding that chest, he dropped this um, for me. This is uh, potentially something worth keeping if I, you know. Um, have the strength to equip it. You uh, need 16 strength for it, but that shouldn't be too hard to find. I'm actually having accoutrements problems as it appears because, uh, well, there's as you can see, a lot of items drop in this dungeon. No lack of them. We'll sell these white ones. If you have money problems, uh, for some reason, you can always come to the Samurai Tom's and you'll find lots of money from this specific dungeon. Now there's one more dungeon in this sort of direction over here, so hopefully these guys will go toward it. Basically over, where was it, over maybe um, in here I think it was, I think there was a chest up there. So we're actually looking for these guys to sort of mosey on up. And this guy looks like he's going there. And there's that chest, and there's the uh, exit, so if, if I was like, you know, not actually trying to explore the entire level and Actually, I am, but if I found an entrance, I could take that down just to uh, um, just get out of the dungeon as fast as possible. And I'll note that uh, there's usually like 8 to 11 rooms, I guess, that'll spawn. So we've got like 1, 2, 2, 3. Uh, let's use the mini map up here. So if I look at the mini map, I've got 1, 2, 3. Um, I'm in the room like 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. There's probably at least. Uh, no more rooms at this point, or if they are, just like maybe only one hidden room. And we're going to open this chest. There's nothing guarding it. It's just a shield. Nothing really spectacular about that. I'm actually tempted at this point to maybe just uh, cut the recording and just sell all this stuff. And notably, that um, shield there is actually too heavy for me to sort of pick up, but whatever. I think what I'm going to do, we're actually going to put on temporarily the uh, strength gloves here. And I'll note this, this, this can boost up your encumbrance, as you can see, by uh, two per strength. So it actually boosts up my encumbrance enough that I can get out just that much. And what I'm going to just do now, we're just going to raw recall at this point. I'm going to rest out. I'm going to go to um, one of the shops, maybe in LV, I think that's the closest. We'll sell off this stuff and then we'll come back for level two. Alright, so I went off to sell this stuff. I figured I probably should note this, by the way, but because I've got, um, you know, the ability to use uh, Phase Door here, I can use this to um, select, you know, myself to target, so I have to actually do that first. I can select where I want to sort of teleport with this, so one of the abilities of this is that I can actually use it to try and um, teleport in the direction of, uh, you know, the place to go, or I can follow these guys if they come around. But I actually have the ability, as you can see, to sort of teleport toward the uh, um, the exit of this dungeon. You're going up. Okay, it's going somewhere else, so we'll actually use that maybe again. I can use this to sort of teleport in the direction of I'm going. And we made it all the way up to the second instance, you know, very quickly, just with the use of phase door there. That's, like, that's just an example where you can use um, 
phase door is trying to get through the uh, the sand run tunnels is trying to you know, avoid the sand and just get where you need to go. I wouldn't be very you know too reckless of it because um, this is also your escape ability. For example, for example, if you um, I could very much fizzle this, and you know that's just the concern, just to sort of you know throw out there. But I was sort of being a little bit risky, and I feel figure we'll just get out of it anyways. There was a problem. All right, so um, down here, just like the Sandrick guy, this is an elite in this area, and this unholy creature looks like a wingless dragon in shape, but it is a sand color, making it all the more dangerous for its prey. So this is a very special dragon. He's one of the few dangers you'll find in here. He has the ability to use something called Sand Breath, and what Sand Breath does, it will actually blind you if it hits you, besides just damaging you. So I'll basically try and kill him immediately, which we did, which is good. And I'll note, by the way, there's, a, there's the exit right there, so there won't be too much of an issue uh, finding that exit. So we can just look around for the loot. And we'll come up here. There's another sand drake, so we're going to rush him and kill him. There's another pouch of steel shots. There's a steel ring of perseverance right there. Being very wary of the sand, and I'll note that there's some stack lore in here as well. We're going to just get that I guess so you know there's uh, there's some stack lore to sort of just uh, descri describes the um, the sort of area it's basically a poem that sort of you know is a tribute I guess to um, the boss of this area all right this was actually a little bit risky because uh, I sort of just, you know jumped out there and I may be in a sandworm tunnel so we're just going to teleport right here Make sure I don't get crossed by Sam. We're just going to rest here now and get my stamina back. All my resources are at maximum, so we'll just uh, follow one of these sandworms somewhere. As a note, you should try and follow along with the exact path that they're going. Um, if you see like an open terrain that you know is just on the way toward where they're going, it may just collapse on you at any given moment, which can be kind of bad. Note that I used Shadow Step there to sort of jump over those guys. Just so I would make sure I wasn't in, like, you know, a potential area where Sam would collapse on top of me. I'm pressing the 5 key quite a bit in this dungeon, just so I can wait for these guys to sort of move forward, so I don't run on them as much as I have already. Okay, we're going to shadow step this guy. Probably should have gone after the sandworm there first, but whatever. Another chest, and it's another rare. This guy's got elemental harmony, which means that he's probably a wormic, I think. And yep, here's an ice cloth, so that guy's got wor wormic abilities on him. He's got shield palm, which is a shield talent. We're just going to stun him. And then we're just going to rip him apart with Flurry, and he's done. And we found yet another uh, ran random artifact. This time it was actually something that we might be able to use on this character. Um, this is the Cloud Zeal, the Elven Wood uh, Wand of Firewall. This gives me resistance to lightning. It gives me some penetration to light. It changes my damage to lightning. It lets me uh, use Volcano. Um, damage when I hit, I basically get... Um, you know, I, I retaliate with 8 lightning damage and stuff. And it can be used to create a wall of flames lasting for four turns, doing, uh, you know, four, 305 damage uh, over four turns or stuff that's placed inside of that. So, very powerful. Um, that's actually a very powerful wand. I might actually want to keep. By the way, you regenerate. It, there's uh, Sometimes these things have like these abilities like 100% chance to regenerate 9 positive energy when used. So, whenever I use this, I apparently will get uh, 9 positive energy 100% of the time. And the other stuff in here, there's a Stun Freeze Immunity Ring, that's kind of cool, but a little lacking. And this guy dropped his helmet, I need armor train to sort of wear it. Uh, when the effects on melee hit, when I basically um, hit people, I have a 20% chance to gain 10% of a turn. And I apparently do 8% um, retaliation temporal damage, and it gives me some light resistance. This is actually worth keeping. Because we're getting to a point in the game where it's worth keeping lightning type gear. 
I'll note that the reason I'm sort of keeping this, not just because of the fact that it's a powerful damaging thing, it has a little bit of light resistance on it, which is actually going to serve a purpose a little bit later on. Um, I find one of, one of the bosses that you might face early on, um, in like this, like it's a really powerful boss, one of the dungeons that um, you'll get to it when we get to it, but he basically deals lightning damage and um, he's going to be a real threat due to that. And the ability to resist lightning will help a lot when fighting him. Okay, you're going to go this way. I'm going to follow this guy, I guess. Looks like he might be going back to the first room, though. Nope, he's going to go right to the exit. It, you know, I can't tell where specifically these guys are going to go. They may go in a certain direction, but it's hard to sort of navigate with these guys because if you're going to a specific room or trying to get to a specific room, you can't really tell where they're going to specifically take you. I might just opt to start using phase door here in a moment. As a result of the, you know, these guys are sort of randomly going about wherever they go. I'm pretty sure there's more um, rooms, however, in here, so that's why I'm sort of, you know, sticking around just to sort of look around for additional rooms. And he's going down, so I'm pretty uh, confident that, yeah, there is a definitely another room somewhere. There it is. So we're just going to rest up, hit this chest. And it's another rare. This guy's got stealth, so he is either uh, a rogue or... You know, a guy like me, he's a rogue because he has traps. So he's got, uh, you know, ability to use traps. We're just going to stun him. And we apparently uh, missed. So this is something to note. Sometimes you can miss people. And, um, it's, you know, it's, you're, it's due, this guy's basically I missed him because he's got um, powerful defensive abilities. If I actually look at his uh, talents, he should have, um, what is it, dual weapon defense. There's that, you know, ability to sort of uh, increase the defense. So it actually made him dodge my attack. Um, as a result, plus he probably has uh, generally decent. De well, yeah, it's, it's fairly de decent dexterity. So he's got 43 dexterity. Um, he stunned me. That's going to be a bit of an issue. The thing here to note is that he actually used stun and hit me with uh, slow. Uh, what might happen here? I can use wild infusion, and it actually took off the slow effect instead of the stun effect, which is actually not good. Um, I actually need the stun effect to go there, so I, you know I could like keep hammering him. My damage is going to be reduced, so I'm going to have to deal with that. However, we're going to be good because we've got a shielding rune here. I'm going to use the regeneration rune for now. And he dropped a bear trap. We're going to try during dirty fight on him. And the purpose for doing that is because I stunned him, or I had a chance to do so. And that will at least cut down his damage for four, four turns. So, you know, basically, um, now he's also going to have reduced damage. And then we just weigh into him with flurry, maybe. And note that my towns aren't going off cooldown because I'm stunned. So, that's a bit of a, you know, a nuisance to sort of deal with, but whatever. I probably should have had Wrath of the Woods on to uh, increase my damage, but we'll turn it on now and just sort of deal with this guy. Let's try and move back. We're just going to rush him. We're actually going to try using the Infusion Sun here to try and blind him, but as you can see, sometimes it can fail, so he resisted the blinding light, and he didn't uh, get um, blinded. And I'll note that, as you can see, he is hurting quite badly. So, in this sort of situation, it might be wise to consider teleporting. So, we're going to teleport somewhere, and I'm actually just going to wait here for a little bit while uh, I sort of regenerate up and just, you know, return for the fight, so to speak. And I'm not sure, but I think there's a, another room over here. Hey, how do you know? There's another room over here. Let's go in here. I got stunned, so note that these uh, Samurai Destroyers can stun you in here. It's not really a big issue, but it can be if, um, you know, there's other guys around. I'll note that it just knows this guy, but there's another stealth guy here. He is bear trap. Well, guess what? We got yet another um, rogue. Roguish ooze. Okay, we're just going to hit that guy. We're going to do dirty fighting on him. And we stunned him the first time, so at least he's not going to be a real threat. It's going to rush him. So I'll note at this point we've got like one, two... 
and it's like you know um, up in the corner of my mini map you can't really see my mouse uh, apparently I noticed in my last videos that it's not showing my mouse for some reason but in the uh, mini map it's like one two three four five six seven in that room down there where you sort of escape from was eight so there's probably um, no more rooms or not that many rooms on this level left so we're just going to just navigate our way back to uh, that ooze that rare stealthy ooze I'm actually gonna wait here I realize my stance a little bit low but I'm actually trying to get back to that guy somewhat and the thing is, if you press rest here, you can you can stop it, but um, you may not stop in time when there's like a guy like this just popping around to sort of let you out of the area. Sadly, it doesn't look like any worms are going down in the direction I need them to. I'm going to go uh, south, and here we go. I've almost uh, recharged pretty much all my stamina, amazingly enough, because these guys took so long. Hey, look, they're... Uh, all right, so here's this guy again. As you can see, he hasn't really restored any health, which is good for us. It means I can just shadow strike this guy. He tried to use uh, dual strike, but he missed this time, so he didn't get the stunning again. We're just gonna melee him, and he's done. I'm level 13, and I'm kicking ass. Um, at this point, I think what we're gonna do. We're actually gonna, you know, just increase, uh, you know, dexterity a little bit more, and we'll drop maybe another point over, maybe into. Well, we want sweep. We'll take that right now. I can actually invest in more one too, but we're taking these uh, two towns because they're AOEs that let me hit multiple targets. I'll know that this point is just phased out because I don't have any of my strength gear on, so we're just gonna do that right now. And I'll note, but uh, if I want to, and I guess I probably should, I can equip those items and equip this now. This is not um, an armor that requires that me. I have the armor training just because I have 16 strength, so I can put this on now. And putting that on basically means that I now have the ability to uh, get the resistance from that. So acid, fire, cold. I have a little bit of penetration to acid and I have a little bit more armor. Um, I'm going to lose off 10% retaliation damage, but the res resistances on this will be fairly noteworthy if uh, I run into anyone who can use those, uh, you know, type of elemental attacks on me. I'll note that we have this, like, serving the uh, thing over here, the anti-magic thing. But anyhow, the thing about equipping both of those is that it lets me get my 16 strength to put to drop a drop a point here. And because I dropped a point here, I can now use heavy mill armor, gauntlets, helms, and heavy boots, assuming I have the stat requirements for them. So this is now eligible for wearing. And this is much better than my uh well what I was previously wearing over here. So I can put that on. That will give me a boost to my resistances and lightning. It'll also let me get a 10% um, re return of a turn whenever I um you get that 20% chance from occurring. It does have a, a bit of fatigue on it, so that will increase my sort of cost much more than, say, either of these we're doing, but that's really a minor thing. Um, now, I'm just going to just, like, sort of uh, put that on. I'm thinking of possibly keeping this because it raises my cunning. Um, and I think I actually accidentally transmogrified some more stuff again, but whatever. I guess we'll just start throwing this into. Uh, oh, here's another thing that increased my strength. But we already increased our um, our armor strength. We don't really need a whole lot of uh, strength at this point. I'm actually going to sell. Yeah, I'm going to sell these because these are really heavy items. These shield and uh, massive armors. And because they're white named. So I'm just going to throw some of this stuff in here. I actually found a dagger. This dagger is a flaming steel dagger of vileness. It has um, a burst on radius of one of uh, six fire, so I guess that's just a you know, burst on the target that it does a little bit more damage, not that great, but whatever. Does a little bit of additional damage. It has a 6% chance to put disease on targets, but I think we prefer our, our dagger a little bit over that, so we don't really worry about it. Now I've got a little bit of, you know, as you can see, an accumulus problem. I think what we're going to do, we're just going to yeah, just look at these two, see if uh, they're comparable. This one is much weaker, so we'll get rid of it. And I'm sort of carrying around these, like, you know, these uh, quiver of arrows and the steel shots for, like, when I pick up a bow. And I've yet to really do so, I don't think, so... 
even though I, you know, I, I plan to do it for demonstration purposes, we'll actually get rid of this uh, ash arrows here, just so I can have the incumbents sort of, uh, you know, fixed up a little bit. So I'm pretty sure at this point we managed to clear out the second instance. There just doesn't seem to be anything else in here that's going to be too much of a threat. So I'll just, you know, as again, we'll raw recall. I'm going to go back to Elvia. I'm going to sell all this stuff. And um, basically we're going to make a little bit more money from doing so and then continue back onto the third level. All right, we're back. So yeah, we're back here on the first level. And I figured maybe this time we'll do something a little bit different. Let's try to teleport. So this is a very risky thing using teleport, but it can actually also allow you to try and uh, navigate this area. It randomly just fro show, throws you wherever you want, but in this case, there wasn't, you know, we're in a corner there, so we're just gonna end up somewhere that is closer to the hole. And as a result, we actually got here very, very quick because we had a good teleport. And I can just go down here and just mosey on to the third level. All right, so Sandrake right here, we're just going to uh, rush him and kill him. I'm actually kind of disappointed in the Drakes because they're actually feeling they do what I want them to do. Because I'm damn, you know, I'm just so damn uh, skilled that they're just, you know, cowering in fear, so to speak, from me. Just gonna follow the sand room here. I'm gonna follow this worm, I guess. And down here, we've actually got ourselves another Wormick by the looks of it, because he's got icy skin on, 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 on Mac Leon. It's also got Ice Claw there. He's got Wing Buffet. This guy could potentially be dangerous because he has Wing Buffet. Wing Buffet is an ability that basically knocks back um, enemies, and in this case, it can knock me back. We're actually going to rush this guy, and the purpose for doing that was just to try and daze him. Um, and apparently, what happened there, he actually. Uh, he got undazed because he attacked me, I think, right back, and as a result, my, my retaliation damage took him off his daze. But whatever. Here's a good example where I can use Sweep. So Sweep is this, like, area effects um, uh, ability that uh, um, rogues and other people with uh, dual we weapon talents have. What Sweep will do, it basically gives you, like, this sort of targeting feature, like, in eight directions. If you click on an enemy, it basically lets you hit adjacent enemies. So we basically hit both, um, you know, the Sandworm Burrow here, which has got infinite health and, you know, whatever, it doesn't, isn't going to get killed anyways. We hit this guy and we hit his friend that was over there who is killed already. We're just going to kill him. I'm going to kill the Sandworm, kill this guy. And I'm taking a whole lot of damage for some reason. So we're actually going to put the shield on and walk here. Kill that guy. I'm going to use... Uh, health regen, because I think there's uh, another guy around that's also popped me. Note, by the way, that sometimes stuff can w wander through the halls of these other guys if they see you. In this case, there's a room in that direction, and these guys are actually mosling on over to me. Now, these replicating enemies actually can be kind of detrimental if you're in a trapped um, hallway. The, f the nature of, this, uh, of these tunnels, because they're collapsing behind you, it's very likely that you may end up in a situation where there's like a bunch of guys at the end of the tunnel blocking your way to get into the safety of, you know, room that, a room that will not have sand, wall, sand walls falling on top of you. And then um, if you're, you know, the, the walls behind you are slowly crashing in towards you and then hitting you in the back. So you have to be really careful sort of uh, with like navigating this area. Usually it's not a big issue because you just keep following the um, sandworm tunneler, but it can be. Now note by the way, you can also use your pickaxe to try and dig through here. In this case, I've got the uh, the tooth in the mouth, and it basically lets me um, dig through uh, most of the you know the areas in here fast enough. I don't recommend like just going through the entire area. That's actually a lot of guys around me to sort of uh, deal with, but whatever. I don't recommend just um, you know just trying to tunnel like straight through uh, all all on your own to get to where you need to go. It's much it's much more safer to fall off a guy, but sometimes you know you just have to do whatever you got to do. Alright, we're actually next to a bunch of guys here, and I just want to sweep these guys here to kill off those guys and hit this guy. We're going to kill him. Um, we're actually going to try and kill this uh, black jelly with a uh, flurry. And I'll note that I'm sort of running out of stamina here. Then we're just going to pop up these uh, worms. We'll hit that red ooze, hit that worm. 
And there we go. So we actually kill all that. We actually picked up a good regeneration rune right there. Even though that's not, you know, green or, you know, anything special about this one. It's got pretty damn high um, life restore over five turns. It lasts, uh, you know, 16 turns as you can see. So that's a, a bit of a, you know, it's a bit higher than this one. But that's actually really worth um, considering for use just because it has a fairly high amount of uh, life to regenerate. Might as well just move this stuff over now. Try to I tried to wear that, but I failed. That's a rare helmet that uh, popped up. And um, I'll note that I'm actually going to keep this because it's got uh, breathes some water. And these things are both really heavy. And I'm not sure they're going to be really worth keeping, so... We're just going to transmogrify these ones because I know I'm not going to have the sort of space to you know, carry those big behemoths of the things. Now, I should probably note this time, I've got like a lot of gear and I haven't really been doing... I've basically in the shops just been like, you know, not selling them. But some players, I'm sure you probably have had run into maybe an issue where you maybe sell something you didn't want to sell. And then, of course, you uh, have to buy it back from the store. Something you can do, let's say I like go to these, you can actually have the ability to tag stuff. And what tagging will do... Um, tagged objects cannot be destroyed or dropped, and it can't be sold either until I think they're untagged. So, they can basically go strength gloves, plus two. And now I'll put a tag next to them, and basically you can't destroy or uh, basically drop this item. It's going to sit in your inventory until you untag it, and then, uh, you know, then you can, like, after you untag it, you can do whatever you want with it. But, once that's tagged, it won't go away. And I can tag this one, I can say, water breathing. And I'll note, by the way, this water breathing thing that's sort of telling you a bit, bit about uh, allows you to breathe in water. Um, that basically just means that I don't drown if I'm in water. And that will actually be very beneficial to uh, the old forest dungeon when I get over there soon, soon enough. Um, I don't know why I kept these. So you know what, we're actually going to get rid of it. That's actually going to help me increase quite a bit, but whatever. It's too bad I already got rid of the other thing. We're going to keep uh, this one, we're going to call it the uh, Cunning Helmet. It's not really a helmet, but whatever. It's headgear. And we're going to say plus three. And we're going to call this um, strength helmet plus two. And we're going to put AM next to it because it's an anti magic item. If I can find a better suitable strength item than this, then I might you know, use that over um, the, anti the arc and disrupting forces if for some reason I decide to put it on. And we'll say we'll keep this. We're going to tag this as uh, potentially potential inscription. Right now, I'm not going to put this on this uh, regeneration infusion because even though it may be you know kind of useful, um, right now it's not really useful to me. We're going to say this is just um, lightning or lit resist, and we'll actually put. Uh, Damage utility. I should put damage utility. I'm actually shortening up the words here because the tags, you know, it's kind of hard to read that tag when it's like, you know, all the way on the end there. And we'll just put this as a uh, demonstrator for now. So that's basically all that stuff. And that because I tagged it all, I won't, you know, accidentally lose it because, you know, I forgot that I didn't want to sell it or. I made a mistake of, uh, you know, selling it when I didn't mean to. Just, you know, moseying on, trying to sell stuff, wasn't really paying attention. But now that's tagged, it won't do that. It won't sell or get transmogrified or anything else, I believe. Um, there's a carrying worm mass. I'm actually kind of uh, wondering where the um, worm that's kind of like these are is. But anyways, these are carrying worm masses. These can be kind of dangerous because they have the ability to sort of do this, like, sort of uh, blight area effect, as you can see at the... Uh, text sort of down there if I click this on here. Carrying Worm's Mass Blight uh, Area Effect hits uh, Carrying Worm Mass for, you know, whatever damage. They're immune to um, Blight damage so they don't take anything. It'll damage everyone around me that's, you know, capable of being damaged by, including myself. I'll note that these guys are also getting damaged. And it can actually kind of hurt if you uh, let's stack up, so you have to be really careful of it. We'll rest up a little bit there. And in this case, I'm going to be kind of risky. We're actually going to follow this guy a little bit late. You should probably be very careful if you're going to try and, you know, 
run down a um, a Samurai, a Samurai Tunnels, you know, the sand wall that's been burrowed out by one of those burrowers uh, very late because you could end up where a situation that, you know, enemies will be at the end blocking you away and you're uh, going to have sand, worms, uh, sand walls falling, uh, you know, behind you like that is. And this guy is a doomed. He's going to be kind of dangerous because he's doomed. We're going to just do Wrath of the Woods. I'm actually going to do the Shielding Ruin um, prematurely just because I know he could be dangerous. I'm going to do Dirty Fighting on him. He spawned a shadow, but I stunned him. He actually froze me there, so we're actually going to use our Infusion Wild to get rid of that. I'm going to hit him directly with a Sweep, because I'll hit his Shadow Friend. And he'll kill his Shadow. And you'll note that these guys split off, even though, you know, th this guy's a rare, this guy's able to split off him. I'm going to use a Flurry to try and kill him instantly, and he died. And, his, and note, by the way, that uh, these guys, this guy right here is uh, going to suffocate in that sort of wall. So if I serve his weight, um, here, eventually this uh, guy is going to uh, either, you know, damage himself, tame himself, or he's going to start suffocating. Maybe we'll see that. So, the white ooze starts suffocating to death. And he's died because he's suffocated. I'll note by the way, if I want to pick that up, we'll just dig it out. I can just hit it, and then there we go. Got that item. I'm not going to follow these guys around instead of looking at my items for now. Just because I don't want to get trapped in like you know a room and find out that these guys were not going to come back for a little while, which should happen. Sometimes you know these guys will just not come back to you for a long, long time. They'll just go elsewhere. Hey, there's uh, guys up here, apparently. We're going to use a Shadow Step on this guy, because it'll teleport us into room. I'm going to deal with all the guys up here. So, room right there, room right, you know, where we started. We're still missing the exit room, I think, so... We know there's more rooms, at least for that reason. In a way, I kind of like finding the exit very, you know, very like, like the very last room. Because it means that, you know, I have to uh, like explore the entire place to find it. And that means I'll get all the goodies, like the chests, that might be present. Other times, though, it can be kind of annoying, because it takes forever to try and find it, sometimes. Though, the worms are fairly good about going to the exit points. Um, you can also, be, you can pretty much be sure that if uh, you want to get to the exit, they will eventually take you to the exit quite quickly, because I think they have a higher chance of trying to go to it. More often than not. Okay, we're actually going to sit here, I guess, and we'll look at the items I sort of picked up. So I picked up this uh, Randart um, heavy armor. I obviously can't use it, but uh, it's another example of like you know a powerful item that could pop up that might be of use uh, if I was actually able to use that type of thing. Um, right now, I'm wearing you know these uh, boots down here. They actually give me a lot of physical save, mental save, dexterity, cunning, and con. Um, and disengage. This is probably not going to match up to that, so we're just going to move it to my uh, normal inventory and just like probably sell it when we get the chance. And you are going somewhere else. And you are going somewhere else. And hopefully you're going at least somewhere up here. Excellent. There's a bit more lore. And this guy's actually proceeding to go somewhere else. We're actually going to rush this guy, and there's the exit. And boom. So we actually found out the uh, exit point. So that's good. And we'll go to this chest here. I just want to close the door. Looks like we had a ring pop out. It's a pixie steel ring of sensing. That will give me a little bit of uh, ability to see stealth and see visibility and blindness immunity. Blindness immunity is actually kind of useful here, so you know what, we're actually going to possibly uh, consider putting that on for the moment. The uh, ability to uh, avoid being blinded is actually kind of useful in the Samurai Tunnels. I actually want to sort of show off being blinded, but... Oh well, we're uh, just going to have to 
the old not being blinded. Actually, it's probably a good thing. Blind is another detrimental effect, much like stun. Except in here, it's actually kind of detrimental. And this is going to be kind of dangerous, but we're just going to walk this way a little bit. And, you know, let's get back here. So, as I did that, I looked over in that sort of direction because it sort of mapped out if there's anything over in this sort of direction that might be a room. There might actually be a room right to... Nope, that's a sandworm there. Alright, so at this point, I can just like look around the map and... I'm pretty sure that there might be, you know, a room down this sort of area. And we actually, the best, you can note by the way, if you look at the mini-map, you'll see a lot of like blue lines going over. That's actually the, uh, the presence of the sandworm tunnelers going in the various directions. If you, uh, see them going in like a, um, you know, like a, a piece over here, like if I, um, I have to go, I have to tunnel down to it because you can't see my cursor. Um, down here, where is it? You can sort of see like, you know, there's like this sort of black area, I guess, over in this sort of area. And it looks like there's a samurai actually in that area somewhere. And over here, you can see this sort of fading. So this guy, Sam, um, they, I'm probably possibly falling over here. There might be a room, and this guy just might pop up. Right there. So I'm pretty sure there's like no rooms over here. Just because it doesn't seem like the samurais are actually going in any of those sort of areas. And much like before, I think what we're going to do, we're just going to pop out one more time. And you know what? This might, I'm actually knowing, by the way, this is probably not a safe thing to do. You should probably never, like, just pop out um, willy nilly from the samurai tunnels because it does increase the time that you're spending inside the samurai tunnels, and that can mean more time getting crushed by sand. But, um, you know, whatever. It's just a, it's a risk I'm able to take because I'm a little bit more, um, inclined to taking those risks and being able to survive them at this point. Okay, this guy is like, you know, sort of blocking our way from going LVS. We're going to go up to Durf, and I'm going to cut the recording to sell the stuff and to see you back in instance one. Alright, um, I just learned something by the way, but, uh, if you, uh, you know, you see this here, you can't sell apparently to the stores your tagged items. Obviously it's popping up, you know, water beam that lets me know, mm, I don't want to sell that, but in this case over here, I can't see the, uh, you know, the tag on this because it's got so much stats on it. As you can see, there's the tag right at the end there, but it, it should help, help tagging stuff, so um, if you tag stuff, there's less chance that you'll uh, sell stuff you don't want to sell. There's actually not a whole lot for me to sell here, so you know, I think we're actually going to um, just continue on from this point to get back. And none of this stuff is really worth keeping. So yeah, we're just going to mosey on back from Durf instead of uh, moseying on back to the first instance. I'll note, by the way, that um, these Zigger Patrols, you know, they're a little bit of an issue. Be cautious around them because, you know, they could pop up and you have to battle them if uh, you run into their tile or if they run into yours, rather. But whatever. Alright, so we're going to, I should probably note by the way, if you want to like play it really safe, if like, you know, if you're a little bit concerned that you might teleport into a bad place, or you might get squished by sand for some reason, I can use like a shielding rune here, and that'll actually protect me from some initial damage from being hit by a sand, a sand wall. And I can just teleport, and we came over here apparently. There's actually a worm here, who could possibly take me to somewhere closer. It's actually going straight down, so I won't call that closer. There we go. And there's uh, instance two, instance three, and we are almost on to the very last instance of uh, this dungeon. And that was very kind of you, Mr. Worm. You went straight to the exit for me. So as I said, sometimes it'll go straight to the exit just like that. Alright, um, we start off apparently with a uh, Cursed. He's uh, Cursed with um, Prenatural Census, Reckless Charge. Whatever. So, there's this guy here. We're just going to do Shielding. Uh, let's try to blinding this guy, so... And by the way, he can blindside you, which is basically much similar to your Shadow Step. He just instantly targets, you know, your character and just hits you 
he appears on the melee side of you randomly and hits you from that side. We failed to uh, apparently uh, blind this guy, so, you know, that's a bit of an issue, but whatever. Not expect the Wrath of the Woods here. We're just going to do dirty fighting. That stunned him. Flurry him. That nearly killed him. The melee attack finishes him off. And the thing about this uh, room to know is that we actually got two chests, so that's going to be kind of cool. We're just going to go here. We'll do maybe a flurry on. Or not flurry, or. Oh, well, I did do a flurry, but. This will do a sweep on these guys, then. Maybe we'll blind these guys. And I'll note that, you know, you can't always be guaranteed to blind these guys. In this case, we're actually having a very hard time blinding these guys, so. Blind is not too effective in here. Or a rune is not too effective, either war. We actually picked up some uh, Quiver of Elven Arrows uh, Randart here. That's actually a pretty good uh, uh, you know, arrow item because it's got huge capacity. And we actually picked up a, fear, uh, a sling so I can use this. Okay, we don't really care about this, but we'll sell it for money. So, okay, offset. Um, I'll note, by the way, if you press Q, you switch to your offset items, which basically, uh, in this case, is empty. But you also click it up here, offset, main set, offset as needed. We're going to put on the pouch of uh, seal shots, and I'm going to put on the cured leather sling. So I put on these two items, and you'll notice at the top here, there's like this sort of ammunition check. This is the amount of ammunition you have um, from like your like sort of sling thing. And to basically shoot, here's the shoot town over here. We're actually going to just move this um, back over this way for now. So, is now basically going to have to press control 1 to uh, use my shoot uh, ability. You'll notice that all my melee talents are on cooldown, or they're just unavailable. It's because they require dual, weapon, you know, dual weapons to use, so they're unavailable as a result. This is available to shoot. Shoot your bow or sling or any other missile launcher. And they basically give me the ability to uh, shoot at any target that's like, you know, sort of nearby. I'm going to press Q for now, though, because we don't need it just yet. We'll trick back to our daggers, open this chest. Um, it's basically another one of these, you know, uh, this glorious little spawn. It's nothing really spectacular about them. Let those guys hit this guy, hit that guy, hit this guy. And they're all dead. I'm just going to he heal up my uh, stamina a little bit. And I was looking here, so this guy dropped uh, something that fires off a random bolt of uh, elemental energy it could hit in any element. We also picked up this um, arcing pouch of steel slots. This basically gives uh, additional range damage, but also on weapon hits has a chance to arc to a second um, uh, target, so basically do um, collateral damage. And on uh, a chance of a hit, I have a 10% uh, chance of getting a turn. That might be uh, worth using over my current, um, you know, shot item. We'll have a look when I uh, really care about checking. And we apparently have uh, picked up a little bit too much stuff already. Well, we're going to have to sell something, and I guess we're going to uh, sell this armor, perhaps, because it's the heaviest, or maybe sell this shield. We'll sell the shield, why not? I realize it's a blue name item, but uh, I shall sell them both. I'll note, by the way, I'm having sort of weight problems here just because I'm carrying, you know, additional items now at this point. I'm carrying all four of these items, which basically, as you can see, one, four, six, eight. So eight of my increments is going to these items here. I've also got, you know, a couple of these rings and stuff. They're layer weight, but they can add up too eventually if you have a whole bunch of them. This is, uh, you know, adding up a little bit. The stuff over here is probably what's adding up the most. So, um, Having both of these, like, you know, uh, wands here, this shot and this quiver, they're adding up a little bit. Then there's also the items over here adding up a little bit as well, so this, uh, this weighs a little bit to put on, this weighs a little bit to put on, all this weighs stuff to uh, equip and hold. This stuff is, a, you know, weighing out a little bit. I'll note, by the way, whenever you uh, switch weapons, it actually takes a turn. And I sort of didn't mean to do that. And uh, looks dark, like Dark God's decided to go nuts. So, message from Dark God. This is something that he can uh, randomly do whenever he, uh, you know, the whim of Dark Gods are uh, shining upon you, so to speak. So, in this case, he basically just triggered two um, uh, event zones, the Land of Poosh and the Bear Escape. 
these are areas that we can go visit and as I say level 15 recommended so we'll possibly go look at those areas a little bit later and for no random reason I'm basically invulnerable all right well whatever thank you dark god um I now uh got you know victory rush and I'm invulnerable I can't be killed as a result I guess we're going to use teleport we're actually going to press Q here and I'm going to use the teleport now the reason I did this is because I'll make the use of this. I'm not able to be killed right now, so I can just, you know... As you can see, we basically had a few turns of uh, gross destruction, so to speak, available to us. Just gonna heal up a little bit there, get my man back. You actually want to do it a lot in this uh, instance. This is Sandworm in Layer 4, and this is actually where the boss will spawn. The boss of this instance is a little bit... Um, a little bit threatening, not gonna lie. And it looks like uh, this shot here is actually, it's just comparable actually to this one. It's not actually a whole lot better. But I think we'll actually just put it on just because it has that ability to arc. And it'll let me um, get rid of this uh, demonstrative one here. We'll untag this. I'm not gonna sell it. Make a little bit more encumbrance. I could teleport again, but uh, because I don't know where the rooms really are spawning. And I'll note, by the way, teleporting in here can be kind of dangerous as well. Where this like, space here is empty, this guy has tunneled that way. Um, it's very possible I could teleport into that space where he's go he was going, and then that's actually uh, you know, a space I don't know is uh, dangerous or not. And Well, there's an enemy here, uh, apparently, and he's sort of in that space. This is probably a good time to sh show you what shoot does. So basically, you, um, to shoot, you basically have to use the talent. And then it just, you know, fires off a shot at range, and you lose an ammunition um, as your ammunition goes down. And I'll note that these guys are dropping items. We're actually going to just stop that for now and collect this. I'm actually going to follow this guy here. There's a sun infusion there. A uh, bit more trivial lore. In this case, it's a very long trivial lore that spawns anywhere. And we're just going to follow along where the sandworm was. And again, this is probably not a good idea because there's a possibility I could have trapped. Because this guy, you know, is so far ahead. This is probably not the best area to show off uh, slings and bows and how the, you know, shooting mechanics work in this, uh, in this uh, area. Just because there's, you know, the danger I could accidentally get killed. Through stupidity. Another piece of trivial lore. And there's the boss. So here is the Sandworm Queen. And um, unlike the uh, Sandrakes that I've been fighting, she will demonstrate what I'm, uh, you know, really fear from those Sandrakes once we uh, get around to it. I'm going to use Shielding Ruin. We're actually going to use the uh, Wrath of the Woods right away. I'm going to rush. And, alright, so first things first. Note about uh, one thing about it is that she's got a summoner. She has the ability to summon enemies to sort of aid her in her fight against you, and that can be, you know, kind of uh, um, bad if you're unable to deal with lots of enemies. We're actually going to just uh, use our dirty fighting on her right now. And note that uh, she resisted a stun, and nothing happened. Um, that's like a sort of, a, you know, ability of dirty fighting, where I just basically got myself an extra 45% damage on her, and though I failed to stun her, I still had, to, you know, the... Uh, um, ability to do a little bit of extra damage on her. We're going to use Dual Strike on her. And that failed to stun her, so this is actually uh, uh, kind of an uneasy situation. She's actually, um, well, not stunned or disabled in any way, so she have, you have, you, I'm going to have to be very careful of her. We're going to use Sweep, and I'm going to basically hit this guy here to hit uh, her, her, him, and then this guy here. So they all die. And she breathes sand. So this is the uh, sort of effect that I sort of scared um, that she might use. Breathing sand is like the ability that these um, uh, sand drakes have, and I was expecting them to show, show it off. They have sand breath, and sand breath has the ability to blind you if you get hit by it. It's a 100% chance of uh, occurring unless you have uh, immunity to it. So in this case, my character, if I go to my defenses, we have a little bit of blindness immunity, and that's, what, that's the only thing that really saved me from not being blinded there. Alright, so I'm actually uh, you know, kind of uneasy being in, sort of in the back over here. Um, we're actually going to use the Sun Infusion to hopefully blind these guys. And look at that, we may actually get blind off on at least the Sandworm Queen. And because she's blinded, she's actually going to be 
uh, less likely to hit me. So I can just milliar a little bit, milliar a little bit, milliar a little bit. And no, she's no longer blinded, but she uh, wasn't really doing a whole lot else besides, uh, you know, just being an idiot there. Someone blinded me. She actually used the Infusion Sun much like I did, and she blinded me right back. Uh, we're going to risk trying to use the Wild Infusion to get rid of it. We failed, so I'm going to be blinded for a little bit longer. We're going to use the Regeneration Ruin here. And basically, blinded. The target is blinded and unable to see anything. So, as you can see, I see nothing! And uh, Mental Save reduces the duration of his effect by zero turns. So, quite literally, I'm going to have to basically last through this blindness effect. And one of the effects of being blind is that you can't see what you're doing, though, because I know that she's you know, directly above me, I'll just press up and I'll hit her. Um, we're actually just going to keep hitting up. And we actually became unblinded and we just moved up there. Heart of the Samurai Queen, so that's a bit of lore on this thing. This is actually a very special item, this uh, Heart of the Samurai Queen. It's actually, um, if you go to your inventory and you go to this uh, shallows here, this is um, the Heart of the Samurai Queen and it can be consumed. It's the Heart of the Samurai Queen ripped from the dead body. You could consume it, should you feel mad enough. Or you could try to corrupt it somewhere. Uh, we won't bother trying to corrupt it, but uh, we will just uh, consume it in a moment. We're just basically going to deal with these guys first. I'm just going to hit you, hit you, flurry him. So that was a little bit of a tense situation. I was actually in a position where Sam could have came on top of me right there and killed me, but I killed the Samurai Queen as her entered the room fast enough that it wasn't too big of an issue. Alright, so we can use the Heart of Sam Queen. Just click on it, press use. And you'll notice that you gain the affinity for nature. You can now use, uh, learn new Harmony talents. So if you press P, I've learned a Harmony uh, you know, thing down here. And if you uh, read the rest of it, it actually uh, lets you know you got three stat points to spend, one class talent point, and one generic. So she actually gives you pretty much the effects of a level up um, without it actually being a level up. So that's really, really cool. And I can use those to sort of buff my character a little bit more. We'll pick up Whirlwind. That's uh, an area of effect that hits everything around you. So this is like a free tile, uh, hit the guy and the guy's next to him. This is just a full uh, AoE that hits everyone around you. We're going to keep investing in Dexterity. And I'm actually going to increase uh, Dagger Mastery a little bit now, just because I want to sort of like uh, boost up my damage of Daggers a little bit more, because, you know, best offense or best defense is a good offense. We'll rest up, make sure everything's at maximum, ready to go. And then we'll follow the next Samurai guy here out to the next room. Now, I will note, by the way, that it is possible for her to be just, you know, somewhere else. I've actually had a situation where she sort of spawned um, outside of a room. And as a result, she was actually kind of hard to find. And when I did find her, I, uh, well, let's just put it this way. Um, go watch the Kornak... Uh, uh, cursed character that I guess will run and maybe watch the last episodes and you'll notice what happens in the last moments because uh, that's pretty much what happened. The last moments of that character was uh, with that um, that boss, the you know Samurai Queen up there. Uh, this guy is a giant egg Samurai Tunnel. He's basically like these burrowers here. He tunnels through walls, but unlike the other guys, he can actually attack you as well. We're just going to kill him and be done with him. And I'll notice, by the way, there's some items in the sand there. Apparently there was, there was an enemy that sort of popped up in that sort of area, but it got buried in sand. We'll take that level up. And I think we'll increase Dagger Mastery up to 4. And as you can see, it's almost available. I can get up to 5 of 5, which will mean um, once I get up to 5 of 5, I'll do a total of 55% extra damage with daggers. And I'll also have physical power up to 60, so lots of extra damage with daggers. Which will be good, because daggers will do a lot more damage that way. Um, I think we'll get dual weapon training up to... You'll notice that's only a 2% increase to sort of get this up to uh, 5 of 5, but... Um, it's extra damage, and it is actually worth doing, just because I like extra damage on this character. To sort of survive. And now this passively increase all my damage with all my attacks. So it's good, you know, pick up early, but good to pick up later. So this is good to pick up some point. We'll pick up now. I'm actually going to blindside or shadow step these guys over here. Um, 
I'll note by the way you want to be careful of this slow thing because it actually reduces your speed. It's not a really big thing because I got the feather steel ammo to sort of move around, but it's something to be wary of. Um, so I can use sweep here, basically hit these guys, and that hits everyone around me. Note that this guy's sort of like, you know, a different area. Um, you know, if this guy was like, if I want to sweep this guy, it wouldn't hit this guy. Whirlwind lets me hit everything around me. In that case, we actually hit this, this guy and that guy. Kill this guy, kill you. There is a little bit more of the uh, lore that basically tells you about the queen. The lore in itself is just basically telling you about the dungeon in, in all its glory and its, and its was worth. Uh, Aja rolls from a chest. It's just uh, a sword. And we got two rares popping out of this chest. One of these guys has got shield wall. He looks a little bit dangerous because... Um, well, this guy right here, I think, is... He's got War Shout. I'm not sure what this guy is. He might be a Berserker or he might be a Bulwark. This guy here, he is um, a Berserker. This guy's a Berserker for sure. This guy, I'm not sure what he is. Anyhow, um, this guy is probably the key threat because I know he's a Berserker. But this guy's also dangerous because he's able to stun me. They're actually both really dangerous, so it doesn't really matter which one I go for first. We'll use Dirty Fight on this guy and actually stun him so that he's going to be a little bit less of an issue. We'll use Dual Fight on this guy to stun him, so they're both stunned and we'll you know, be happy with that. We're going to hit this guy with Flurry and then we're just going to finish him off. Or he ran away, that's fine, we'll let him run off a little bit. He's actually got Insidious Poison on him and I'll take a little bit of damage from that Insidious Poison effect. We'll just go after this guy and note that this guy, as you can see, is losing HP. Not a whole lot, but he's losing enough. Rush this guy, and they're both dead. They're going a mace. And as you can see, I can stop that to sort of follow this guy. So I can get to like the next room. I have a little bit less stamina, but that's fine. I don't need to have full stamina. On this character, I don't think, for this area. For the rest of it. It's too bad we didn't manage to see one of the enemies I wanted to show off, but... Um, there's actually an enemy in here called the Gravity Worm, and he's basically a Paradox themed or a Temporal themed enemy. And he's actually probably the biggest threat in here because he has the ability to sort of lock you down, pin you to the ground, due to his effects. He also has some other uh, interesting stuff available to him as well. Yep, we're just randomly going in circles at this point because, you know, these guys are going in whatever direction they wish. That guy just went this way, so maybe we'll follow him. Okay, there's no room in the middle there. And Ira's going to go this way now. I, I do want to actually possibly pick these items up, by the way. There's actually five items there. You see the Amethyst and there's four more objects underneath it. There's probably a gelatinous cube that died there. And he died to probably the sand, suffocated in it. More than likely a burrower was down there and he followed the burrower and he got stuck in sand and died. Alright, I'm not sure there's actually any rooms left at this point. I've actually explored a good portion of the map. Oh well. You know what, we're going to try and do this, but basically, um, I'm going to use the dig ability, which is, you know, this one over here. And we're just going to try to tunnel down to this. So I don't recommend doing this, but if you're able to dig fast enough, you can like sort of dig like a, pa a path to where you need to go. So in this case, and we'll you know, basically just dug down to it and picked up the stuff. And where are you going? Down here. And this is kind of risky, but we're going to follow this path to nothing. Alright, I'm pretty sure that we've managed to clear out this area, so there shouldn't be any enemies left, um, I guess, to sort of deal with. And sadly, yet again, I found a crappy movement infusion. I actually want better movement infusion, but um, 
this is, I guess, at this point, um, I'll note that the movement infusion, this is like a, a potentially really good infusion. It basically increases your movement speed, and I'd actually prefer to have it like for, let's say, the situa this situation of a dungeon where I can use it to get around, but um, I haven't found like one that's like, say, over 500%. And um, until I actually get that 500% like, you know, movement infusion, it's not really worth using in my opinion, so we really won't worry about it. We're just going to move all this stuff to my inventory for now. We actually found a steel ring of lightning, so we're going to keep that. That's going to be useful for um, the lightning resist, so we'll actually tag this as lightning resist. Eh, well, we're not, we don't have anything else in here. really note so let's put that on lightning resist we found chilling steel dagger that's sadly doesn't look like it's going to be anything of worth i'm going to have lots and lots of uh uh inventory problems in the moment because the increment is going to go way off the charts especially that massive armor i just put on there's another sling And we've got way too much items to start carry out, so we're going to sell off the white names like this. Since, you know, they're just white names and they won't be as worth as much. And I might sell off these staves because they're a little bit heavier, but we'll sell off these boots first. We'll sell off that heavy armor because it's, like, you know, heavy. And we'll sell off the shield because it's heavy. And the rest of the stuff that I'm carrying, there's something that increases my strength. That's actually worth keeping for the strength boost, I guess. But yeah, actually, we'll, we want to keep that. We'll actually put it on uh, over this. So when I, whenever I need the extra strength to, like, say, put on my, uh, you know, stuff like this that requires 16 strength, I'll have the ability for it. And we'll just get rid of this now. Or we'll, do, we'll sell that, actually. All right, I actually need to uh, equip some strength items. So you know what we're going to do this? We're going to put this on. We're going to put on this digger, and this will actually let me uh, get a little bit more strength. And it's sometimes possible that you'll find items that will, uh, like these like um, these equipable items that will have like little boost st stats on them. doesn't look like any of them specifically have any, so that's too bad, or at least the ones I can wear. And none of these have anything that boosts up strength, so we'll put on this. Just because I'm going to sell it. We're going to hit off uh, Raw Recall. We're going to just uh, wait to get out of here. It's been a long episode, and it's more or less because this is a fairly, uh, you know, long dungeon if you're going to go back and forth trying to sell everything to uh, make as much uh, money as possible. I'll note that we just had Storming the City sort of pop up there. That's a quest that disappears when you get over to level 14. And as you approach Durf, you saw a huge dark cloud over the small town. When you entered it, you were greeted by an army of our elemental sorry the population. That's a little bit of a teaser, so to tell you what, what what's going to happen. But basically, Durf is not very safe at the moment, so we're actually going to go to Elvia. Once this guy lets me get out of the way. And we're just going to sell off all this stuff and make some money. And then next time, I think we might actually go uh, as a teaser to what we might do in the next video. Maybe we'll go visit Durf, just so I can clear out um, the elementals, but also uh, so I can show you off what they're a little bit dangerous about doing. This actually gives me lightning resist. Um, oh, right, that's, I, no, I knew it would give me lightning resist. I'm wearing the anti-magic hat at the moment. This just is I'm saving that for cunning. Let's sell this uh, stuff now. I know, by the way, that, that those white name amulets and rings that you can f possibly find. Unlike the other stuff, white name rings and amulets actually do serve a purpose, but I won't be using their purpose, so to speak. I may demonstrate it a little bit later, but for now, we'll just uh, mosey on ignoring it for now. All right, all this stuff is going to get sold. That's all sold. 
These will get sold. Sell them. We'll sell the movement infusion here. I'm actually thinking about possibly putting on that uh, regeneration infusion over the sun infusion. I think I've already uh, shown off uh, you know enough of its use already. But I think I might go to the old maze first, first just to uh, show you off a little bit about um, using it to light up dark areas because you can use that for uh, that for that purpose. We're gonna sell this. I don't plan to use arrows like as a um, you know anything about those arrows for like actual use. Where I more or less putting on a sling, by the way. Um, this one here for demonstration purposes. Now I'm still gonna demonstrate a little bit more, but for now, I don't think I will do much else with them. I'm gonna put this on now because that's got lightning resist on it. We'll get rid of this uh, anti-magic helmet because um, I prefer having no anti-magic gear at any time for any use, where possible. Put this back on. Now we're actually going to put on... Um, the light and resist ring here. And we're actually going to put on this wand because it gives a little bit of light and resist. Next time, we're going to basically use um, my light, my new found light resistance to, uh, as you can see, I'm now 44% resistance to lightning. We're going to use that to go visit Durf and see what's up with those lightning elementals that were just talked about in the quest there. So for now, take care. I'll see you next time when we uh, start mosey on over. And I'll note, by the way, that. Uh, we basically have Volcano and the uh, Rod down here. Maybe we'll show those off a little bit soon.